Welcome to Myths. I'm Matt Hoss. And I'm Dan Rhodes. Whether you know about Theseus or you're revising your syllabus. If you want tales with a bit of jest or you just want to hear about incest. What? What? It's really interesting. Welcome to Myths. Welcome to Myths. Hello and welcome to episode 96 of this fabled uh, five-star podcast, Myths. I feel like that was a good promo, wasn't it? That was a good promo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and where should we do Should we do the episode the wrong way around today? So let's start the social media, then let's rank the myth, <laughs> then do the story backwards, which is, in all fairness, how we usually do it. Did we try that once and it was the, and this is saying something, the worst episode we've ever done? <laughs> well, funny enough, like... Like, structural-wise, yes, worse episode, but definitely not worse in content, you know what I mean? Because we've there's some... Look around the 50 mark, there's some dodgy episodes. Like, episode 60-plus, ugh, each. Like, th- th- let's just say the Odyssey was a slog. <laughs> but how are you, Dan? I'm good, how are you, Matthew? I'm, I'm very well. You know what, Dan? I've got this big issue in my life at the moment, and it's a bit... Like, it's a, it's, it, it's kind of a thing I'm dealing with at the moment. Like, Is it a tumour? And if so, you should get that seat to <laughs> by a medical professional. <laughs> Firstly, no. Absolutely no. Like, uh, like, but secondly, imagine if I was like, yeah, I think I've got a tumour. But what are you going to do about it, Matt? I should have gone on a podcast. <laughs> I was going to go show, cry and show down. Because <laughs> that, that helps all my problems, doesn't it? Um... No, um, but my issue is, Dan, that, and this is a big issue for Matt Hoss. You know me quite well, right? The big issue in my life is that I, th- I think I'm happy, and I don't think that suits me very well. I'm no, it doesn't, happy. actually. Matt, you've changed. I realised that I, when I, I last saw you. It, how, how so? Explain to the listener. Well, firstly, firstly, you have, well, you don't have to just have, well, obviously, uh, and in the inverted commas, comedy's a job. Well, there's double time on that, right? Double t- <laughs> Comedy is a job. Comedy is a job, okay? But it's recently, but but recently you've been getting the jobs that give you give pay, jobs that pay. You've been yeah. doing jobs that give you money for and, comedy. Yes. Good, good job, Matt. And the jobs. And pay. also, yeah. you've got some other actual job jobs. Yeah, exactly. That also pay money. So I'm working at Mind and also working at a Youth Club as well. And uh, plus with the comedy, I'm doing my tour and comedy as well. So stuff like that really makes me happy. Uh, and I'm really enjoying that. What's that? Sold out shows so far. Oh, that's good. How about your next shows? Less sold out. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, well, I had balance in my life. I feel yeah. good, happy. I Damn, here's a weird thing for me. I have an income. You have an what? income? What? I noticed this when you rocked up in a new car the other day. Yeah. And the car isn't new, but it's new to you. Yeah, new and it's a nice little car too. And it was clean. I haven't got in it for a while, so we'll find out. Dan, like, right, I've had the car for a couple of months now. Guess how long it took me to make it into, as my nana called it, a shit tip. Probably a week. It was actually longer than that, but uh, yesterday... When I get in it later, is it going to be a shit tip? Uh, no, because I had to clean it, because I, I, I met someone the other week, and they... Here's my my total fear. If someone asks me randomly for a lift, and um, there's a horror over my face, it's like, yes, I would love to help you out, but I need two minutes just to sort everything out because there's a mess everywhere. Like the whole passenger seat was covered. I'm not joking, covered with stuff. Like, and recently there's been veganery, so there's a lot more fast food out there. And three, really, and you know, as a, a vegan who is in the media and often talk about a lot of things, I have to research these things. Yeah, so, you have but, to. You have to constantly be eating fast food, vegan food. The, the good of my job requires me to go to KFC five times a week. <laughs> For the, for the job, you understand. Yeah, for the yeah, job, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I've been putting a lot of weight, but it's 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 for the job. Uh, and but service stations are good for me now. Uh, well, p- peak of service is already peak, but like now I can actually have quite a lot of stuff to eat. So there's been my car's just been a right mess, and uh, uh, someone's like, "Oh, can we have a lift?" You like to me the other day, and I was like, uh, 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 "Give me about five minutes." And it sounds like I've got something really dark and disturbing there, but it's just it's just very. Uh, but also, you don't want someone opening the door and. All this trash falls oh, out. yeah. And I'll be honest, since I've been on the tour, some mega drives. And with mega drives, come mega bladder. <laughs> and, uh, i got to be honest, Dan, there's a couple of, there's a couple of bottles which I wouldn't recommend drinking from. <laughs> nice. And they have quite a, uh, 
I ripped a Roma, let's say it like that. You shouldn't have, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and puked. <laughs> I just got all the vegan junk food in them. Like, what is your take on the KFC vegan burger? So, yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of morally or taste-wise, what, 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 what kind of angle do you want? Well, I'm, I'm thinking more like... Life skills, morals, creativity. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay, life skills. What do I learn from a KFC vegan burger? Um, do you learn that it, you can make chicken? Uh, you can or make, you can make vegan stuff taste like chicken? Or have yeah. they failed on that? Is no, that... I think they have. It's quite... No offence, you can tell it's corn, I think. Because it has that kind of like... But I, as a vegan, I kind of need that just to make sure that they haven't put the wrong thing in. If you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. But it tastes like KFC. It's... It tastes delicious? Yeah, it's, you know It's not delicious. It's... it's it's accessible, do you know what it's I mean? And okay. it's convenient, and that's okay. what's good. Uh, and so I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it five. Five, five okay. Uh, Morals? I'm assuming it ranks quite highly. Well, does it? Because it's, uh, it's well, is it moral to talk about? Is it okay to give money to a company that kills like a lot of chickens every day? Like, two, I think it's two million chickens a day, and it's like, is it oh, okay? that's an interesting angle actually. Like, you're going to get a vegan burger to feel better about yourself, but you're still pumping money into a billion, multi-billion-dollar company yeah. that kills chickens. I think it's better to give money to local and independent vegan places, and I strongly believe that. But I needs must sometimes. Yeah, and like also like I think it's a po- giving your money to any vegan thing is a good thing. Um, I would I I. When possible, we'll avoid KFC. Apart um, from those uh, vegan restaurants that are laundering money for the drugs cartels. Yeah, yeah, all of them. Because, you know, like, a lot of people get into uh, the, the vegan businesses because they're really ethical. And they want an ethical drug <laughs> trade as well. Because <laughs> people get into vegan stuff for money. That's, that's it, really. Yeah. Like, uh, actually, some people genuinely do. Not, <laughs> not the local independent people. But, the, but um, yeah, so... I'm not, yeah, morals wise, it's a bit, it, you know, it's divided vegans because you have to hardcore people like, fuck you, you're not a real vegan if you have KFC. But my argument is you're not really a real vegan unless you slag off another vegan on Facebook. That's my kind of vibe. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. And that's something you're very good at. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I, you know what? I, I love going to vegan groups just like slagging off, of, not, not, not properly slagging off, but like someone's being a bell end. I'm like, and I'm very good to deflate their ego. You know I mean, I'm just like, I, I just put two proverbial middle fingers up at them. Two, no, two fingers up at them. <laughs> <laughs> two fingers up at them. Um, um, okay, so, so morals where you're ranking it. But, is it mm, but it is a good thing that there's an option out there. So I'm going to give it I'm give it seven. Nice, okay. Uh, creativity, How do you, this is the big one. How do you feel about the taste? What other ingredients did it have in so, it? It's most highly in the fact that it's a vegan burger in KFC, yeah. right? But also, there's not that much going on. Also, you don't get chips because that's not vegetarian because they cook it with the chi- they cook the chips with the chickens. Right. Okay. So it's just a. I didn't, know, I didn't know they force chickens to cook fries. I've never once seen yeah. a chicken cooking the fries. In, uh... <laughs> they get little aprons on the top. What? Kevin, can you get those fries up? So, Kevin, I want it too large. Come on, you. Oh my god, you're <laughs> such an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> with a little KFC hat that, on. That's why it's unethical. Yeah. <laughs> they get really bad contracts. Zero hours contract. <laughs> um, it's, it's matching the the, uh, the the chicken union trade union as well. Like just like uh, um, they all run around like headless people. <laughs> but uh, what else did it have in it? Uh, so it goes bun, chicken, vegan mayonnaise, lettuce. Bam. It's not much going on. Not much going on there. Yeah. It's I say it's accessible, not delicious. It's fine. It's good. But I'm gonna give it. But this is just the start, surely. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to sound like we, we should definitely be getting paid by KFC to do this. And KFC, if you are listening, please email us at this podcast. Because <laughs> they're definitely listening. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. We just fight off the chicken workers. Yeah, mispodcast at gmail.com. Uh, I'm assuming the CEO of KFC will get in touch at some point and say <laughs> that we're now being paid. Absolutely. Would you take that gig? Uh, I'm not sure. I feel a bit weird about it. Bring, 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 bring. For that again, I do love money. Hey, is that Matt Haas? Hi, hello. Um, Hi, this is the CEO of KFC, who I haven't Googled, so I don't know that, what his name is. Is that Colonel Sanders? <laughs> yeah, it's, y'all, this is Colonel Sanders. There we go. Um, I was just wondering if you would like to promote our vegan range here at Kentucky Fried Chicken. By range, do you mean corn, the cob, and the vegan burger? Yes. And any other things we are looking to do in the near future. We're looking to score highly in the creative department. Okay, but before I... I love your podcast, by the way. Sold. <laughs> no, if you, um, I think I can only. T- how much money you're offering? Because this is well. Okay. Gonna, what do I? Th- do I have to sell that properly? Or 
What well, think? I'm thinking, mate, like, honestly, I'm just going to pay you the same I pay all my promoters. I will pay you a monthly income of $100,000 American. Uh, monthly as well? Yes, yeah, every month, yeah. For how long? For one month. <laughs> <laughs> See, that changes it. It's like, oh, I doesn't know. But you only have to do the job for a year. Wait, no, wait. I'm paying you a yearly salary. I lied about the month thing. It's okay. a yearly salary. <laughs> it's the weirdest contract to negotiation I've ever had. I don't normally do the phone calls. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. dead, technically. <laughs> no wonder why, yeah. Like, the chicken rot your brain. Uh, okay, now I am... Um, so for... That's over a million, a million dollars. Or so you have to come out and say chicken's delicious. We can chicken's delicious. But... No, you have to say chicken's delicious. Can I say in my right, kind of like, yeah, chicken's delicious. Yeah, you can say it like that. Yeah. As long as legally you say chicken's delicious. <laughs> um, see, the moral man in me has been quenched by the, the, the very, like, the money man in me. But, here's the thing. I was like, yes to the gig, but I will spend a lot of that money on helping, genuinely helping animals around the UK. Deal. Done. Nice. Creativity. Well, yeah, so do you have to sell out now? No. Creativity 10. <laughs> Also, I like that you pretended that you would contemplate someone calling up from KFC and telling you to and give you a hundred thousand pounds to you. A month. You'd be. Uh, I don't know. It's weird though. It's kind of like because you'd be like, "Oh, what a great opportunity to afford vegan food!" Blah blah blah. blah. That's not like a chicken. Burger. Also, money. <laughs> yeah. See, the money is a big thing, so I would probably take. But they know this because they listen to the podcast, so they're probably offering me a very low wage. Like, do you want to do it for fiver? Like, oh, go on then. Um, but. And WTF It's pretty weird Pretty weird Six Nice Alright so you're going to put that on the lead table Yeah I would do Yeah cheers man Yeah so I, I was asking more about you But we should probably get on with the podcast We should probably get on with the podcast We oh. took a huge detour Which is so unlike us Yeah we, we At the start of this podcast right? Let's just do a tight five And I'm not going to look at the time yet But it is Twelve minutes <laughs> <laughs> And I said let's not do a Matt Hoss five Which is about twenty minutes Let's do Let's do. Okay, okay. we've got a good one, we've got a good one. Okay. Um, I'll probably see the other side of the jungle. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate because I often start the second section. All right, Dan, what what happened last time? Uh, the the near Azir War. <laughs> it's, you really sound like you're reading that. So uh, 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 what? That was weird. I actually wasn't. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you have a weird dialect. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, it, I haven't even thinks anymore. I feel like I sound like I'm reading stuff. It comes in. It's really bad for for an actor. You yeah. You don't have the most kind of like. You don't have the best cane sometimes as well. Because sometimes, I don't want to say this, but sometimes on a podcast it sounds like you don't care about it. Anyway, what was last week's episode? <laughs> uh, it, was about, it was about a war that happened between the Veneer and the Azir. Yeah. Who are the Azir, Matt? The Azir are the people that live in Val- Valhalla. What are you on? What are you on? No, 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 no. Sorry, they live in. Uh, what's, what's that place called? Uh, the uh, uh, Asgard. Asgard. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. That's what I meant. Asgard. It's genuinely been months since we've done this, and uh, Asgard. Live in Asgard. The like kind of prim and proper. You got your forms. You got your Odins, etc. <laughs> you got the the gods yeah. and the other ones. Other gods. They kind Who of the Vanir. Uh, Vanir are from Vanaheim. Vanaheim. Uh, Obviously, they're all connected to, uh, through uh, the, the Nine Realms. They're also gods, but they're like the other tribe of gods. Yeah, and they're kind of more magic folk. It's like a different nation. Different, think of it as like a different country. Yeah. Like, Asgard is England, Veneer is... Vanaheim is like France. Yeah. Is it France? I think of them as being like, yeah. Or maybe like, I think of them as looking different as well. Yeah. Yeah, you think in like a kind of race kind of thing? Yeah, I think of them as being a slightly different race, maybe, to the Azir. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe let's not go down that rabbit hole because yeah. I feel like that's something we can't really get back from. I feel like my main could be cancelled. That's <laughs> the one thing. Uh, um, but yeah, so they had a war and they resolved that war, didn't they? They did. They resolved it by spitting in a jar. No, well, no, they 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 they, they did some 
other things first? They swapped hostages. They sw- yes, they did. Well, not well, it's not really hostages because they're their own people, right? They they came through. They had a treaty, uh, and some members of the Vanir went to live in Asgard, and some members of the Azir went to live in Vanaheim. Yeah, and people like uh, Freya and Frey came over, came, and Loki, Loki as well. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of like wife swap, but for gods. Yeah, and the idea being that, like, look, if, if a few of us live in each other's countries, then we, like, can prove that we yeah. can get on. It balances out, but also, as you said, there is that hostage judgment, like, um, we got your people, so don't kill our people. But that's why they originally did it, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, but at the end of that, they, uh, then they did something which relates to today's myth as well. So, so should we start? Yes. So, <clears throat> so let's begin our myth. When the Azir and the Vanir made a truce and had settled terms for a lasting peace, every single god and goddess spat into a great jar. What? <laughs> yeah. How can we commemorate this brilliant event, this big truce between these gods? Let's just spit in the, the jar. jar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> imagine, imagine Queen Elizabeth and like uh, and all the royals just kind of spit into the jar. Like, there you go, uh, Morocco. Enjoy that decadence. Uh, would you buy spit from anyone? Um, if it was like your favourite actor spit maybe yeah Brad Pitt I could, I could clone them couldn't I Brad Pitt's later bit. on in the future because you would have cloning technology Dan have you been in my basement uh, you have a basement you live in London Dan <laughs> <laughs> um, this put the seal on their friendship uh, and because the Azir were anxious that no one should forget it even for one moment they carried off the jar and out of the spittle they fashioned a man that's quite impressive you know what? It's a party trick. That, um, is, a, that is really impressive. I, you know, uh, I, I think, uh, and also like, uh, I don't know why they're doing it, but it, it, it felt kind of, it's a bit drunk. Make some out of the moment. Live in the moment. Be mindful. And t- whenever I have a mindfulness moment, I always make a man. You know, that's what I do. If you, also, if you're going to create a man out of something, what you? Because spit's a weird thing to make it out of. What would you? What would be your liquid of choice? Probably blood. That makes sense, doesn't it? You weren't very logical on that as well. I think for you, probably the milk or wheat a bit. You know what I mean? The drinks off that. I think that would be your like. That would that would, would make Dan very. See what I mean? Yeah, but that'd be horrendous. Yeah, it is horrendous, Dan. That's what we've been trying to tell you for a hundred episodes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they created a man out of the spit. His name was Kavisir. Is that how we say it? Kavisir. Kavisir. Kavasir. 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 Silent K. Vasir. <laughs> I feel like... K-Dog. We should say... K- K-Dog. I like K-Dog. Um, I think any time we say a Norse name we don't know, if it's in David Bowie, but it's like, Kavasir. Like that. That's exactly what he sounded like as <laughs> yeah, well. That's how the, all Norse people sound like that. Um, that's where David Bowie came from. Uh, he was so steeped in all matters and mystery of the nine worlds since fire and ice first met in the Kagunga Gap. The Kagunga Gap. That's on episode one. Sorry, I got the sound. Well, it's actually not episode one. It's episode one of North Myths. Well, episode one of North Myths. Because uh, uh, get with it, Dan. Uh, that no god, not man, uh, nor giant, nor dwarf ever regretted putting him a question or asking his opinion. Should I repeat that? Because I don't think I got it right. <laughs> He was so steeped in all matters and mysteries of the Nine World since Fire and Ice first met in the Kagunga Gap that no god, nor man, nor giant, nor dwarf ever regretted putting him a question or asking his opinion. Very wise man, I guess. Very wise. And wherever Kavisir went, news of his coming went before him. When he reached some remote farm or hamlet, sowing or salting or scything or sword play were laid aside... Even children stop chattering and listen to his words. He's a nomad. He's a celebrity. Yes. Oh my god, Kevs is here. He's so cool. He came from the, the spindle. Yeah, it, no one seems to be acknowledging that. Oh, he's so wise. He's like a travelling... He's like Bob Dylan in my head. He kind of goes from town to town. This analogy's already broken down. <laughs> but yeah, he kind of... He, he goes from town to town. Like, uh, he's just solving people's problems. Man, the people. Yeah, I'm liking this guy. He represents... All the good out of all the people. Yes. He's, he's true. From a, from a horrendous war came this beautiful human being. Yeah. Who has come to... Beautiful inside and out. Yeah, absolutely. But Dan, what was his secret? What was his secret? 
It was as much as... I'm gonna have to draw this curtain because I just realized I can't see a fucking thing. Oh, it's dark in here now, boy. Mm-mm. Can you ask me what secret was again, please? But Dan, what was his secret? Good question, Matt. What was his secret? It was as much in his manner as in his mind of understanding. Questions of fact... He answered with simple... What the fuck? That doesn't even make sense. Maybe you just say questions. <laughs> questions of fact. He <laughs> questions of fact. He answered with simple facts. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No, that is... A this is why we don't reread the stuff before. Because we can't reread it because then it ruins it when we read it for the first time. It's a horrible catch-22. People don't understand the struggle. It is a you don't understand the struggle, guys. People are always like, why do you always make mistakes? Don't you read it first? Well, if we read it first, it wouldn't be spontaneous and funny when we first read it. However, it also means that we can't work out when there are bad things or spelling for, mistakes. For example, Antigone. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, that was the number one. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, but I think it adds an air of authenticity to the podcast, you know what I mean? By which I mean... We've, we've, we've read it enough to know that it has what we want yeah. to say. But we haven't read it to pick out grammatical errors. Because we don't want to ruin the story. We don't want to ruin the story. Yeah. But then again, I feel that... I feel we're kind of like, you know, closing the table door off the, bo- the horse's bolted on that one. But, you know, it's... You know, deal with it, guys. Right, just listen to... Like, if you want a professional... Don't listen to a free podcast. Uh, let's do some quick what, rewind noises and we'll make it sound like we just did that rewind. Try and rewind that conversation we just had. Went too far. Uh, uh, hey man, how you doing? Welcome to this. Questions he answered with simple facts. Hold on man. What was the secret? <laughs> as much as in his manner as in his mind of understanding, questions he answered with simple facts. God, that sentence is so clear. Yeah. <laughs> but to ask Kavsir for his opinion, what shall I say? What do you think? What shall I do? Did not always mean getting a direct answer. Sitting back in his ill-fitting clothes, as often as not with his eyes closed, he would listen to recitals... Fucking hell. Recitals of problems and sorrows with a kind, grave, blank face. Sounds boring. <laughs> he took in his, uh, everything in a wider frame. He never intruded or insisted. Rather... He suggested. He's like a therapist to everyone. Yeah, one. yeah. Often enough, he answered a question with another question. Oh, that's a fucking bull leg. Like. He made gods and men, giants and dwarves, feel that they had been helped to answer their own questions. Oh, he's like a therapist that answers your question with his questions. So let's try that now. It's like, oh, Dan, I feel, uh, I feel really sad. Can you help me? Why are you sad? Good question, thanks. <laughs> It's like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Cavs here! Why has my mum left? I don't know. But I think Why would she leave? Is it because I'm an annoying person? You can only ask that for yourself. You can only ask that for yourself. But I think it is, isn't it? I, I let you decide, little Timmy. I think he's more poetic, though. It's kind of like... Uh, it's more, he's he's speaking riddles. He's yeah, like twat and speaking riddles. Like, you, you say, give me something. Like, and I'll... Cavs here! Cavs here! Thank you so much for coming from my village! Why does my penis sting when I <laughs> urinate? <laughs> It is not often the tree that wonders about the apple. It's the apple who th- thinks about the tree. Ah. Oh. That's wonderful. <laughs> Again, to answer my question. <laughs> oh, sorry, let me answer it. Get some women. <laughs> also, get some women. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you finish it all. Stop sleeping around. <laughs> anyway. So that's the kind of... I think he's quite a mystical mind yeah. guy. It sounded like he's kind of boring, though. I don't, yeah. I'm not getting charismatic vibes from him. You know what? Who he reminds me of, Dan? A blank, grave man. Not much of a personality. Can't Alex Hoss. <laughs> not the person I think of, but yeah. <laughs> the stories of Kaz's wisdom soon reached the ears of a most unpleasant pair of brothers. The dwarfs. Fajla and Gala. Fiala. Fiala. I forget how to speak... God damn the wee Viking fucking Icelandic piece of shit. I've Fiala. done it again. <sighs> Fiala and Galar. <laughs> but Dan, what was the secret? <laughs> Should we do it again? <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> the stories of Cassidy's wisdom soon reached, who you say? A, the ears of a most unpleasant pair of brothers. What were their names? I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm going to nail it first time. <laughs> Fiala... And Gala. 
<laughs> their interest soon turned to envy and their envy to energy for they could not admire anything without wanting it for themselves they asked Kavzir to feast with them and the large gathering of dwarves in their cave under the earth and as was his custom Kavzir accepted you, you can't deny a free meal hey Kavzir do you want to come to our party why would I come to a party yeah, well I'm asking you if you want to come to a party what is party? Stop doing that thing. We are. This is a genuine thing. I want you to come to my party. <laughs> Why are parties? Pleasant? No, stop asking me for questions. Just give me a yes or a no. RSVP, for God's sake. Stop speaking in riddles. <laughs> and if a man comes to a party, but the party does... Oh, my God, please. She's <laughs> right here. Fucking right. Come Get on. here at eight. Fuck's sake. <laughs> but, like, I, I kind of, like, imagine their party because it's a thinly veiled, like, it's... It's a, a thin facade. It's like, come to our party. And it's just like... He's like, why are you winking? Oh, I have a twitch. And then there's like a banner that says, uh, KB says murdering party. <laughs> <laughs> the table was a long slab of uneven rock. The floor was grit and the wall hangings were dripping stalactites. Nice tickle. Nice. The talk was chiefly of profit and loss and petty revenge. The food, however, and the tableware all made of hammered gold, were rather more pleasing. Mm. See, this is a nice level of detail. Yeah, it's We're really getting an insight now into the little caves, little, yeah. little dwarf caves. Which you have no opinion on. I have no opinion. Uh, after the feast, Fiala and Galar asked Caves here for a word in private, even though they were in a cave alone by themselves, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> meet you alone. Sure, there's no one else here. <laughs> can, we, can we have a private word? Like, okay, it's like me and you now. <laughs> Damn, can I have a private word? Yeah, can I see us over from private chat? Yeah. yeah. Oh, what are you doing? I was the only one in the room. You're in my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. There's a, there's a comedy sketch in there somewhere. Uh, KBC followed them into a gloomy chamber, and that was a mistake. I mean, it is a mistake because he was already in a room alone. Yeah, with right, yeah. Hey, can we do it in this really well lit? <laughs> I'd rather do it in this well lit room, thank you very much. Now, yeah. let's, get, let's go into the gloomy cavern where there's yeah. no CCTV. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> the two dwarves had knives hidden in their sleeves, and at once they buried them in the wise man's chest. His blood spurted out of his body, and Fiala and Gala caught it all in two large jars, Sun and Bodden. And the and a cauldron called Odorn Odoror O Odrari Odrari Odrari. Let's spell it out. O D R O R I R Od Odorer Odorer. <laughs> Firstly, can I just say something that's been bugging me about North mythology for a while now? Yeah. Why do they give inanimate objects names? Yeah, I don't they know. keep doing this. They're like his chariot, blah blah blah, and his. Cut, blah blah and his chair, but he laid in his bed, he called blah blah And I'm like, what? Stop naming stuff! Can't yeah. they just be called two jars? Can't yeah. the cauldron just be a cauldron? You have to keep naming stuff in your house. Yeah. Oh, Matt, can I have a glass of water? Yeah, what glass do you want it in? Jeff, <laughs> Tim, Pauline, Sandra? Come on, I don't care. Then stop naming stuff. <laughs> Well, I find that very... Well, then uh, maybe you'd look after things more if you had, like, a... Yeah, because I, I... But then again, you know I'm quite a softy, so if, if I to, were to drop something and break... You'd be like, oh, no, Sandra! Hi, Tim, no! <laughs> but, yeah, so there's a cauldron called Odori and two jars, ten and Bodin. But here's the thing. They... At any point during this party, they could have killed him, but they waited to this weird moment as well, and then they... They had nice hidden for the whole night, so, well... You could have just saved yourself a lot of time, you know, I mean, you didn't have to cater for him for the whole time. But anyway, so they caught all of his... But it's the game what catch him off guard, isn't it? Yes, but I feel like you could have done that from... I feel like if the rat is in the mouse trap, you'd have to wait to give the the, the rat the cheese, you know what I mean? Uh, was that a good analogy? That was the worst analogy <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> Firstly, I a know. rat would be in a rat trap. Not a mouse trap. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, sorry, Dan. Uh, sorry, that distinction. Uh, yeah, what's different between a, a mouse trap and a rice, rat, rat trap? Rat traps are bigger for rats. Mouse traps are for mice. Well, he's a big person in a mouse trap. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to defend the analogy. It was bad. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, KBC's, KBC's heart stopped pumping and his body drained white like... Uh, and his drained white body lay still on the ground. So I think he's dead. You know what? I'm not a doctor, but I think he might be dead. 
<laughs> but what I kind of like is the fact that, like, here's a big WT. This is going to make some marks on WTF because they drain his body of all liquid and they catch it on jars. That's messed up. We haven't seen it. Also, the idea that you'd have your, like, your jar in one hand and your knife in the other, and you're just like, bang, and then you catch it all. Yeah, like, a, like your organic, like, grape funnel, if you know what yeah. I mean. Again, your analogies today are on <laughs> fire. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm working on the fly, Dan. All right, so. <gasps> oh, <laughs> but you do it next one. I don't care. Um, but yeah, so it's, they've kind of, like, I imagine, but also, if you... If you tried to take all the liquid out of someone, you would have to stab him a few times. So if you stab him in the chest and held it there, waiting for the pint to pour, it's going to be a long time, right? Mm. So you're going to have to like get them like a rolled up piece of toothpaste, like a, a you know you know you roll the bomb to get all of it out. I imagine that's what they do out of a cave suit. It comes out of his mouth as well. Well, I don't think he's drained a hundred percent of the blood from his body. No, but he's totally. It's like wild. a big. It's a big amount. Okay. Well, you would still be white, wouldn't you? Even if you had, like, two yeah. pints drained from you, you'd probably go a bit pale. Absolutely. I mean, you're always pale because you live up north and you don't see the sunlight, but... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, but Fiala and Galar were delighted with what they have done. What are you doing? When? After a while... <laughs> <laughs> When, after a while, the Azir sent a messenger to ask after Kavisir, the two dwarfs sent back word that he had unfortunately choked on his own learning because there was no one in the nine worlds well informed enough to compare and compete with him. That is the worst excuse I've ever heard. Yeah, absolutely. Being imagine using that in trial. Uh, hey, ding dong! Also, imagine how much they would have shit themselves when the doorbell went and it was the fucking gods. <laughs> Especially because they live in the Hi, buddies, how are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Kevin's is not here, is he? Uh, he, he died. died. How did he die? He choked. How did he choke? On learning. He choked him. How can you choke on learning? Because no one was here to help him. <laughs> imagine, imagine if that was how he died. But <laughs> <laughs> What's the five speed of a going to fall <laughs> Oh, oh, thank God, I almost choked there. Imagine doing Heimlich maneuver, like, like giving him facts and figures. The gods are going to see right through this, surely. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I think that's it's a bad, it's a bad analogy. Can I come in? Uh, no, uh, we're having a party. Well, it doesn't sound like you're having a party. Uh, why are you coming in blood? I it's nice tomato sauce. Oh, sweet, I love tomato sauce. Can I come in and have some? No. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> we'll call you if we see him. <laughs> And also, I like how you say, like, uh, the gods ring on their doorbell, because they live in a cave, and imagine they don't have doorbell technology at that point. Like, what the fuck is that? What is that noise? But anyway, they're going to poo themselves when the doorbell goes, and it is them. Yeah, absolutely. But Fiala and Gala were delighted with what they have done. They weren't scared whatsoever. They poured honey into the jars and cauldron, uh, filled with KBC's blood, and with ladles, they stirred the mixture. The blood and honey formed a sublime mead. Whoever drank it became a poet or a wise man. You can't be both. No, you can't be both. Poets are not wise. No, poets are not wise. I've met a lot of them and they made some bad life choices. That's all I'm saying. Uh, The dwarves kept this mead to themselves. No one tasted it. No one even heard about it. Can I just mention two things? Yeah. Firstly, that's absolutely fucking disgusting. No, what? The whole blood honey thing. Yeah, it's pretty And grim. secondly, has the messenger just bought their goddamn excuse? I think so, yeah. Or is he just like, sure, and then he's actually leaving thinking, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm going to tell someone <laughs> so bad, this is not good, this is not, do you know what I mean? He's, yeah. he's pretending to be, he's on his own, he's probably like, sure, I'll, uh, anyway, have a good day. Kind of. Running down the street, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Kind of like that bit in the murder, like, if you, have you ever seen Misery? No. So, uh, oh, I have actually, of course, with the, when he breaks James Caan and Cape, uh, Stephen yeah. King. There's a bit where the police officer finally figures that out and then he gets shot in the chest by uh, uh, the fat woman. Yeah. Is that horrible? Kathy Bates is a wonderful actress. Kathy if, Bates. You know about the film. Yeah. I know it's a book, but yeah. I don't know what the character's name is. You know what? Do you reckon I. Think about misery. Because yeah, if you don't have misery, a person gets crushed to their car and becomes like, incapacitated. And then, He's uh, a famous writer. And uh, that person nurses them back to health, but it then becomes... She's a super fan of his. But like to the point of creepiness as yeah. well. Do you reckon that super fan, that would be me? Yes. You didn't even have to think about that. No. Oh, thanks. 
I'm not intense, am I? If, am I? If Jeff Rosen, whatever his face is, Rosenstock. Rosenstock crashed outside your house right now, you would definitely not alert the authorities for quite some time because you would want to nurse him back to health yourself to have some time with him. Let's move on. <laughs> but damn, what I'm next. One day, the Dwarf Brothers entertained two gruesome guests, the giant Gilling and his wife. Oh, that's harsh. Firstly, right. Uh, that's, right. There's a dwarf in a cave. A very small cave. How's the giant getting in? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a big cave, but the dwarf's a little. Oh, for, yeah, fair enough. It was not long before they began to quarrel, and Fiala and Gala became more and more spiteful and full of hate. They suggested that Gilling might enjoy the sea breeze, and each taking an oar, rowed far out into the ocean surrounding Midgard. I feel like that's a long row. <laughs> yeah. When the dwarves rammed their boat into a slimy, half-submerged rock, Gilling was alarmed and gripped one gunwale. His alarm was well-founded. The boat... F- founded it? The boat capsized. The boat capsized is the important thing. Gilling was unable to swim. Ha! <laughs> uh, sorry, that's not funny. Gilling was unable to swim, and that was the end of Gilling. So I, uh, I think the point is... I didn't that, mean to laugh at some poor guy drowning. Yeah. Apparently you said it was... You said all like less than 30 seconds ago. Not all, I said all. The two dwarves cheerfully righted their craft and rode back home singing. So they purposely capsized the boat knowing he couldn't swim? Uh, I Not purpose. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, and then they, they could have helped him out, but they, he was trying like, oh, please help me. <laughs> Even though it's a giant area. Because These it dwarves me. are horrible. Yeah, they're pretty grim. However, because they full of... But firstly, if you've got an argument with someone, and they're like, right, you know what we're going to do now? We're going to go out to the middle of nowhere, where no one can see if we dispose of your body, and then we're going to just chill out. Because that's, that's not... No red flag yeah. there. Well, it's, I think it's equivalent of going for a drive, isn't it? Yeah. Like, let's just calm down... Let's go for a bike ride or something and but, just kind of... But if someone's full of ass. spite and goes, let's go for a drive in the middle of the forest. Like, no, obviously yeah, not. Weird. Get in my car. Yeah. All right. And put this jacket on which has got a target on your back. But um, because they've had the kind of the, the mead of poetry, they rode back home singing as well. Fiala and Gala described what happened in, to Gilling's wife. An accident, said Fiala. Is that his name? Is that, is that how he sounds like? Uh, I think it's more like, an accident. So, no, yours is better. <laughs> <laughs> if only he'd been able to swim, Gala said. Oh, that's a savage dig, isn't it? Yeah. It was an accident. Yeah, an accident. If only he could swim. <laughs> I mean... Terrible, terrible loss. That's, exa- that's what he sounds like. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yes, if only he could swim. Killing's wife wept and wept, and sitting in their cave, the two wolves did not like the feel of the tepid water washing around their ankles. These giants are huge. I have an idea, whispered Fiola to his brother. Find a millstone and go and wait above the entrance to the cave. Gala got up and went outside, and Fiola asked the giantess, What did he say, Matt? You, you do the impression. Would it help if you looked out to sea? I can show you the place where he drowned. That's a good, that's a good one. Yeah. You can do that voice It's like, now. kind of like mischievous, like, not mischievous, but like, like, Smug, but also, like, I'm going to say a bit cunty. Okay, from now on you can read him, I'll read the narrator. Gilling's wife stood up, sobbing, and Fiola stepped aside for her, as befits a host. <laughs> and when the giantess stepped out into the daylight, Gala dropped the millstone on her head. <laughs> like, kind of like a, a... I was sick of her wailing, said Fiola. So that's grim. That's fun. grim, yeah. Like, These guys are horrible. Yeah, they're, they're like, genuinely the worst people. These are giving, uh, I mean, after... Hmm. No, these are pretty... In all of the mythology, even Greek and Roman stuff, Pan was a fucking creep, but he was more in a paedophile vibe. These, <laughs> these guys are more like... <laughs> like, they're, they're out and horror, out psychopath. Yeah, like, horror, like psychopath vibe. Yeah. yeah. Serial killer, creepy vibes. And there's no end to their kind of cruelty. Yeah. Uh, when Gilling and his wife did not return to Jotunheim, the land of the giants... Correct? Yes. <laughs> Their son, son, Sutung. son, Sutung, Sutung. S- Sutung, sounds like a fucking onomatopoeia, Sutung, set out in search of them. He looked at the dwarf's mis- dismayed face, fucking oh, hell. When Gilling and his wife did not return to Jotunheim, Land of the Giants, Land of the Giants, their son, Sutung, set out in search of them. 
He looked at the dwarfs' dis- dismal faces and listened to their lengthy tales, and then he seized both of them by the scruff of their neck. I mean, a giant could take two dwarves on easy. Absolutely. I mean, giants take on, like, gods. Absolutely. And uh, they're actually, like, aren't they also, like, all be- like, they're pretty powerful? Holding one in each hand, a pair of danglers, he angrily waded a mile out to sea until he was too deep even for him. Well, it shows how much they had to row out to that guy. Yeah, exactly. They, they, yeah. A mile. When Sutton dumped Fiala and Gala on a skerry, a sopping rock standing just clear of the water. So you kind of place them in the middle of like this island. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was waiting for you to do the voice. Oh, sorry, sorry. I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> now, it's far too much for you to swim, he said. Much too far. So when the tide rises... Fiala looked at Gala and both brothers grimaced. <laughs> we have a suggestion, said Fiala. <laughs> Since it has come to this, we are willing to offer you our greatest treasure. Then Fiala described their mead, both its origin and power, with a wealth of words. Give us our lives, said Gala, and we'll give it to you. (sighs) Agreed, said Satam. So Satam took the two dwarves back to their cave, and, since they clearly had no choice, they handed over Kivas' blood to the mead that they made, the disgusting, disgusting drink. Right, let's... Can we just... We need to sit and talk about this for a second. So yeah, your acting was great. Thank you, man. Uh, Sutton comes all the way to find his, his parents. parents. Yeah, and he's Bernard. like, "These two guys murdered them. Great." And also, I don't think it mentions it, but the, you know how they were singing earlier. I think the reason why Sutton found out was because uh, they described themselves like, "We just murdered someone, and we feel really great." I just dropped some one stone on someone's head, a plate, like something like that. And I think that's how uh, that's how they were caught out. If you know what I mean, because they're very non-discreet about their crimes yeah. as well. But um, also, so he comes to find his parents, and then he about to kill these two, and they're like, "We'll give you some blood," and he's like. That's good enough for me. Well, it's not any blood. They have also described how awesome it is. Yes, but also, but here's the question: is like in Norse times, like there's there's kind of reparation costs. So if someone dies, uh, instead of killing them and getting justice, you can get justice by like if they give you a certain amount of money. So if I give you if if I killed someone dear to you and it's like oh here's five hundred pounds, like, yeah, that's fair enough. Cheers. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like yeah. kind of, it's kind of like a. Uh, reparation costs in that way. But yeah, anyway, what happened at the end? So, Satan took the two dwarves back to their cave, and since they clearly had no choice, they handed over Kivas' blood. The giant stumped back to Jotunheim, carrying Sun in one hand and Bjorn in the other. Bowden. Bowden in the other, and... The two jars and a goddamn cauldron. cauldron He took the precious liquid straight to the mountain Hip... (laughs) <laughs> Hindenburg, 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 where he lived. Satung hewed a new chamber out of the rock at the heart of the mountain and hid the three crocs in it. And he told his daughter Gunload that she had one duty: guard, guard this mead by day and guard it by night. Guard it all the time. So, do you want to leave it there? And that is the end of this myth. But we'll continue the story. Next week. But now, we're going to go and rank it. Hey there, my name is Matt Huss, and in this link, I have an American accent. And I advocate the safe use of missed podcasts. In small doses. So, as mentioned last week, we uh, read Cabus, the, the Azir of Vinir War and the creation of Cabus Sith, today's Cabus myth. And next week, we're going to see how it all plays out afterwards as well. Uh, but Dan, did you enjoy this? I actually did really enjoy that list. Did what? you not? Yeah, it was really good one. Been, I was looking forward to sharing this with you as well. But um, uh, firstly, I think we should uh, give a 10 out of 10 performance from, from my, my, my performance. Thank you. And so how do we rank this, Dan? We would rank this on four categories. We actually did it in the intro when you ranked your KFC. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Life skills. Morals, creativity, and WTF. Let's just get straight into it then. Yeah, life skills, Matt. Practical, Practical things we learned. So, uh, we learned how to row out to sea. We, we did, actually, that's true. We learned poetry. Yeah, we learned how to murder people. A lot of people. Well, actually, not just murder, but like specifically how to. We learned how to crush people's heads. We learned how to purge someone of their blood from their heart. We learned, we learned how to make mead. Yes. Uh, 
we le- we learn um, how to row, how to be totally sent, like how to be totally cruel and cold, like murdering a, yeah. wi- a widow. That's pretty. We learn how to be manipulative. He lied. They lied to the messenger. They lied. They didn't actually lie to the Sotong, the son, but they did kind of manip- They manipulated him into. And uh, yeah, also they they they're able to persuade as well, and also yeah. beg for their lives as well. Uh, you also learn how to cave, uh, create a cave. Cave, yeah. Uh, I, pretty high, actually. Yeah. Um, you know what, Dan? We learned a lot and very various stuff. I'm going to say nine. I agree. Yeah. Why not a ten? Ten? I don't see why it wouldn't be. We did learn a lot. Yes. I think, yeah, ten. We've given ten to other things that were similarly as, uh, yeah. Morals. Okay. Some big ones here. Don't drop a millstone on a grieving widow's head. Yeah. Don't kill people at every chance you get. Yeah, because they kill people in lots of different ways. They there's they kill someone for the to use up their power. They lie to people. They they kill someone because they were annoyed at them, and they also killed someone because they were being a nuisance. Uh, and also they beg for their lives as well. Yeah, morals are pretty high. But they're not because they're technically good. Because of the because of the low morals is high. Yeah. Morals. Morality in this is low, therefore it's good. So, what other, what other things have we learned now? Well, I just think about all the deceit. There's a lot of deceit. A lot of deceit. We also, um, the fact that KBC is a wise person, he kind of went from town to town helping He's people. He's really like a nice guy, yeah. There's wisdom. Like but a local celebrity. But then again, there's not much else going on after this, you know what I mean? Apart, oh, uh, don't tell your daughter to guard things day and night, because, you know, when's she going to get a break? At the very end? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she'll go out. Yeah, probably. Well, overall, it was disgusting because these people are horrible. So I think there's a lot of gruesome elements, but we have to we have to be careful not to confuse WTF with morals. Though, do you know what I mean? So on its own count, I don't think morals is totally high. Yeah? We haven't learned a huge. Well, we've learned not to kill. It's deep. Yeah, it's yeah deep well, like knowledge, don't, but now don't don't murder people. Uh, in several ways. Yeah, I'm going to say five or six. Just, I think. I think a five. Five. I think it's seven. pretty like creativity. I want you to take the lead on this one. Thank you. Stuff happened. It was pretty creative. Ten. <laughs> Ten, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, we had a lot happen. I think the way they murdered them was pretty gruesome. It wasn't just like, oh, they murdered them. I mean, we're talking about being stuck, like, but, hiding, hiding the knives in your, concealing them in your sleeve, and putting him into the jar, like a dark room, stabbing him in the heart, and having the jars read like you knew this was planned. And They already planned to make the mead out of his blood. That yeah, was pretty crazy, like the way they, the recipe. And the way that they brought him in to the cave, yeah. to the party, and then talked to him in private. Uh, the fact that they lied to the messenger gods, but yeah. also were not really discreet about it, but how they continued to, on their war path, and they felt invincible as well. Yeah. I think that also makes we're kind of answering creativity and WTF so yeah. let's do how messed together. up it is that he like rode out to sea yeah and uh, how they survived as well yeah. uh, and they seemingly don't really get their upcomings really no. they lose their value, but they, they killed a woman because she was crying and it annoyed <laughs> yeah. them and yeah and that's pretty and not just because she was crying she was crying because they just murdered her husband yeah and they lied to her about yeah. it as well um in terms of creativity, uh, and also we, in terms of creativity, let's talk about the characters of Fiala and Gala. We've never met anyone like them before. No. They're, I think they're new brands of psychopaths. Absolute psychopaths. Who work together. But also, KBC as well. Uh, he's a wise guy, going from town to town. But also, like, kind of, I imagine he's a bit like Vision from Avengers. He's kind of like, very, very powerful, but quite boring. Yeah, I, that's, a good, that's a good one. Yeah. So... So there's multi multi layers there as well, and the fact that Sutton was happy to take it as well. I'm gonna say creativity eight. I agree. That's what I said. What I was gonna do. And WTF? We talked about it a lot. We kind of talked about it as we go way through. So don't need to mourn this too much. But I think it's gonna be ten. It's okay. gonna be a ten. I agree. It's a high one. It's a high one. Uh, I'm gonna say is it thirty three? Yeah, very high. Not bad. It just lost out in the morals there, didn't it? Yeah. One day we're gonna have a. Uh, maybe it should be high for morals. I see that we already made our ranking. If you disagree about our ranking, why don't you email us? At I think you're right though, because morals is different to creativity and WTF. Yeah. Morals is about the moral things we learn, and all we really learn is don't murder people. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us on our uh, our murderous conquest. See how it pans out next week. Uh, and you can uh, if you subscribe, you can get it ASAP. Uh, so subscribe, download, and share it with your friends. Please tell people about this podcast. 
if you'd like, if you want to talk to us about it, why don't you join our fan club, which is in the Misfits fan club on Facebook. Uh, you can join us on at Miss Podcast on um, Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to get in touch, misspodcast at gmail.com. Any other things that I've done? I just had water and it was really nice. Oh, good, good. Actually, sorry, that wasn't water, it's actually my blood. I put some honey in it. So why am I, why am I now stupider? <laughs> Are you starting to feel the effects of maybe being really intense with people in love? Uh, maybe maybe talk about ex-girlfriends on podcasts? Is that the kind of thing you want to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to talk about... I slept in my car last night, which is weird. <laughs> anyway, I, I've been Matt House. I've been Dan Rhodes. And we've been... Miss! We didn't plan that. We didn't plan that. Bye. Bye. Miss. Miss. Feeds it to him like, yeah. like that. Too much? Too much. Yeah. <laughs>